Good afternoon, everyone. Summer snow in Victoria and New South Wales, Australia. Coldest February day in over a decade. Looking back at the beginning of summer this year in Australia, snowfall. Tasmania last week, snowfall in summer. Oh, wait. Tasmania also had summer snow as well. Two of the coldest days in Perth since 1897. Cold records breaking all over Western Australia. And don't tell the global warming crowd that there's 58 glaciers growing in New Zealand. Or that there's been four summer snow events in New Zealand this year. This summer snow seems like it's becoming a trend. The southern oceans, Australia, New Zealand. Welcome to the new grand solar minimum. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030. And join me on my new podcast, Mini Ice Age Conversations, available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Summer snow on the coldest February day in over a decade. Victoria Alpine region, at least five centimeters of snow. That's about two inches, two and a half inches. And I love how the Bureau of Meteorology forecasters always tell you it's not unprecedented when it falls out of line with the global warming agenda. And you'll see this play again and again throughout all media worldwide. That's the key word they use. It's not unprecedented. Just to make it seem as if snow in the middle of summer in supposedly the warmest year ever, it's a normal thing. And it didn't just fall in Victoria also New South Wales. And highlighted in the blue at the bottom there, it's about 9 degrees Celsius below normal temperatures. Look around Falls Creek. Also some upper elevations. And I love how the meteorologists over the last few years have been saying, there'll be no more snow in these areas, so you might as well sell your ski resorts. And then we get snow in the summer in the Alps, and then last year the ski season extended out far into the late spring. Taking a look at February 2017, most of the coldest temperatures in Victoria and Tasmania. Alpine Resort, it's going to be an early start to the ski season this year. And the images keep rolling in, and then I really love coldest February day for over 12 years in Melbourne. But wait, we just need roll back the clock into the very end middle of the summer this would be like the middle of august getting snow in somewhere like tennessee november 24th 2016 which is the height of the summer down in the southern hemisphere summer snow again what is this trend that seems to be happening snowfall blankets part of the state for several days before the arrival of summer so you saw it coming into this summer there was snow and now going out late summer, there's snow again. There was snow in the height of the summer. And now let's go to Tasmania. Snow. It's the first snow of the year, obviously. It's still summertime. It's not even getting into the fall down there yet. Or winter. Nation swelters in some places in New South Wales. They had the wildfires down there. Snow. And cold temperatures across Tasmania. And wait a second. Let's just go back to the height of the summer again. Summer snow in Tasmania. And all the while, the Bureau of Meteorology trying to tell you it's the warmest and it's getting warmer. And here it is. Multiple instances of summer snow at Christmas time at the warmest part of the year in the Southern Hemisphere. I know it's high country, but it still should not be snowing at that time. And then we jump over to Joe Nova. Perth cold records smashed. Just 10 days after Perth had its fourth coldest January max since 1897 now they're getting the coldest days since 1945 and the february dailies are smashed back to that 1897 record let's take a look at january 30th the light blue there fourth place when we look at the days at perth airport when we go back to 1945 and Perth, for the entire year, was the coolest in more than a decade. And this winter was the coldest for more than 20 years. Suddenly now, records are breaking all over Western Australia. And they're coming out with the end of February forecast calling for possibly the 
coldest recorded ever temperatures through West Australia this year. And then we look at the coldest days in Perth since 1897. February 9th, coldest ever since that period. Then we look at the number 10 position, and it was just a day after February 10th. The coolest temperatures to 1945, those are right at the top there. So I went to the Bureau of Meteorology website where you could check in the lowest daily maximums. I didn't put minimum on purpose. I put lowest daily maximum in there. And you can see through Tasmania, West Australia is where the coolest conditions were. But you can still see how cool it was during that time. Now let's jump over to New Zealand. We keep hearing about glaciers melting across this planet, but why are they not telling you that 58 glaciers across New Zealand are advancing? Talk about burying that under the rug. This is from physics.org. I'll leave that for you there so you can follow up on your own good article and rundown in that as well. And staying in New Zealand, how many of you heard about the New Zealand summer snowfalls? Oh, that is plural. It happened four times. So the depths of these ranged even over a foot. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. And as we get deeper into this grand solar minimum, and you can truly see jet stream patterns undulating and all kind of crazy weather across the planet, it's not due to CO2. It's due to effects from our sun. Crop losses are always part of a grand solar minimum. I encourage you to jump over to Trade Genius. Talk with Bob Kudla over there. He'll explain to you what a grand solar minimum is and how they are trading on the losses they see coming with the agricultural products moving forward through 2018 and 19.